come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome to the late night edition of the Saturday Night Freak Show, and Happy New Year, We'll everybody. call it Sideshow. The Saturday Night Sideshow. Yeah, side show. Yeah. Side show. <laughs> right. I like that. There it is. All right. Sideshow show. <laughs> Sideshow Sean, Sideshow Colin, and Sideshow Holly. There That's we right. go. There we go. Introductions all around. So yeah. this, uh, what we're doing is a special episode oh, where shit. we're just going to talk about it's a bonus. Yeah, because it's the end of the year. It is, and we haven't seen everything that came out this year. But we don't. Not at all. We usually talk about like movies that have been out for like many years, yeah, like thirty years at some point. But we also watch movies that. Maybe just came out. I mean, you. You're used out. to hearing us talk about movies that are like really old. We go to really the theater. <laughs> but we go to the theater, <laughs> see some new stuff. As movie fans, we yes. try to keep current. We love movies. So it's we see fast. some stuff. Sometimes we don't see some stuff. Yeah. But we see some stuff, sometimes, and we like some stuff. Sometimes we're late to the game and seeing some stuff. <laughs> sometimes we're very late. Yeah. So we're not saying that we've seen. Uh, have everything. you guys seen this Avatar movie? <laughs> I haven't. I, I, I hear that's I, really hot. I haven't. I've, I've I haven't seen, seen that. it. I haven't seen it either. I've I have never no seen idea. It. <laughs> I'm right there with you, Holly. I have not seen Avatar. I have no idea if it's good. I've I can't believe it. that I'm sitting at... Okay, so... I don't want to see it. What the, Avatar is like a pretty decent movie. Yeah, yeah I'm it's sure it's a decent gully, movie, but, but it's still like, pretty decent. Right. I'm open to it. And I'm in 3D, too, it's something else. I'll, I'll never like go like, I'm going to buy this and watch it. No. <laughs> but there are movies that I have seen this year that I do appreciate and that are in my top five. Yeah, a couple stood out. A couple stood out. Maybe this about year. five. There were some good ones. <laughs> well, maybe we should go around the table and uh, we're going to come up with our top five movies of the year and why they were so goddamn awesome. Why they were good. All right. Well, Sean, why don't you start us off with number five on your list and we'll just work our way around. Okay. Um, I have a list. Of, there's like seven I'm looking at right now. So I got to like whittle it down as we're talking here. But I think. One of the movies I had the best experience with this year, I'm going to say Deadpool, mm. because mm-hmm. not often do I go to see go to the theater to see uh, comedies. I like comedies, but I usually like the theater is not my place for them. I like to go see a horror movie. I like to go see a drama or a big action spectacle at the theater. Something that's worth the you know huge screen and the big sound that goes with it. So comedies, um, uh, you know. Uh, I'm not going to the theater for, but I mean, Deadpool is more than just a comedy. It I was going to say, it's, isn't it kind of an action? I mean, spe- uh, hold, 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 I'm yeah. getting there. It's a, <laughs> it is also like, it's a bigger action spectacle. It's a more low key uh, superhero movie compared to the ones we've seen this year. But um, it is, uh, the reason it's in my top five, it's like, it's a really funny movie. Like, I've always liked Ryan Reynolds. Um, I don't, I read a lot of online articles that say, like, hey, uh, Ryan, especially when Deadpool came out. Ryan Reynolds is like uh, is is coming to, into his own, and people are finally appreciating him for his uh, the comedy aspect of his career. But to me, he's like always been funny. He's done movies like Just Friends. Yeah, I Just think he Friends started is, out as a comedian. He did uh, Two Guys, a Girl, in a Pizza Place. Like he started out in comedy, but I don't think um, people know him for that as much. They know but him he, from Blade Trinity. Or I'm, something. I'm, I mean, Blade Trinity. Yeah, the on uh, the not supposed to be funny uh, Green Lantern, <laughs> right, and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. But I mean, it's he's a really funny person. Um, it's a really good movie. It's a movie he's been like dying to get made for like a good. Uh, I mean, he says ten years, and I'm I'm and I've been hearing about it for I guess that long. I don't know when. Uh, when did X Men Origins come out? When he first played Wade Wilson? Um, like oh seven, maybe. Uh, yeah. Maybe oh, wow. Oh seven. Early mm-hmm. on, but he's yeah. been wanting to play this character for a long time because he loves Deadpool. Um, and it's one of the uh, I would say. Technically, as far as the mass audience goes, a lower tier superhero, but they finally got to make it. It's uh, with uh, the director, Tim Miller, and it's written by, uh, I think, Rhett Reese, and I don't remember the other guy. The same guys who wrote Zombieland. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, but it's a, I loved it. It's a really funny movie. Um, again, it's low key. Like the world is not going to be destroyed if Deadpool doesn't, you know, come in and save the world. He's just going to save his girl in this one. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, a really good movie for me. It's really funny. I like Ryan Reynolds in this role. It's the, it's the role he was born to play Mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's also like, it's, 
the rated R Marvel movie, which is what the first of its kind. Well, last time they had to change the releasing company to Marv for Kick Ass. Yeah. To, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I missed that one. Uh, Marv. Marv. Oh wow. Um, but all right, the first official rated R <laughs> Marvel movie uh, that has led Blade? the way. Okay. Eh, all right. Yeah, but like you know, Marvel. <clears throat> Yeah, with the logos. Right, yeah, with I all that you. stuff, the officially, <laughs> which is, I mean, paved the way for such a movie. I mean, Logan's coming out soon. Mm-hmm. That's a rated R Marvel movie, which mm-hmm. also looks really good. But um, it really, like, it was really made me laugh. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, I love seeing Ryan, Ryan Reynolds in this role. Um, yeah, that's, I'd say, number five for me this year. Very good movie. Holly's uh, number five. My number five. I'm gonna have to piggyback Sean. It's also Deadpool. Oh damn! Yeah, I I love. Call Dead, a lot of people. I love this movie. It. Yeah. It's really good. It's really good. Um, I don't necessarily think that Ryan Reynolds is known for not being comedic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that's really all of the only thing. From what I read online, it's just like people were. Stupid. Uh, it, I mean, maybe. <laughs> like, I'm going by like mass audiences as far as they know him. Really? Maybe. Pretty- the only thing I can think of, well, besides Blade, the only thing I can think of was my first experience with Ryan Reynolds was in the early 90s. He did a made for TV movie called A Secret Between Friends. Oh, dear Lord. It was Lifetime style. Oh, oh no. yeah. And it was a movie about two best friends that had bulimia, and he was like the boyfriend. Hmm. I mean, that was his he dramatic like, role. Uh, um, <laughs> waiting, waiting. Which waiting. I mean, he's not a he's a character in that, not a big character. He's but not in like old school Amityville. New school, yeah, well, that was him. But that was when he did Amityville and uh, Blade Trinity. That Smoke was, and Aces. But those were those were against type at the time, where he was yeah. trying to be like yeah, a dramatic like actor Van before Wilder? that. Like, yeah, Van, yeah. Wilder, that's Van Wilder. Wilder. Van Wilder. Oh, there we go. That's the yeah. one. All right, yeah. maybe I'm wrong. A comedic uh, actor. I'm wrong. Yeah, you are. <laughs> oh, just kidding. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> Jesus. Just kidding. <laughs> I took the initiative to admit that I was wrong, and I'm right. just teasing you. No, I'm I am piggybacking off Sean because I agreed. I agree with everything else he said about this movie. It's fantastic. It's hilarious. Hilarious, um, and it it is Deadpool is he's he's the anti hero. He's not a hero. This whole movie is about revenge, and it really, it it really is. is. This entire movie is he doesn't about care. Revenge. He doesn't care about being and a hero. Mock- he keeps getting yeah. recruited to be it's, a hero, and he's like, no. He's like, no. I'm. Not I want a hero. to kill a guy. That's what I yeah. want to do. And he was making fun of the X Men, and he just he's so <laughs> anti hero. And I think it's fantastic. Oh, I think it's, it's very hilarious. good movie. And that character Deadpool, he's he's a fanboy. He's a, he's a fanboy uh, character. He's not. He wasn't the well known character. He wasn't Superman, Batman. He's a comic. He's the one that the the comic nerds all love. Which I mean, I get it. He's he's a great character. I'm surprised it took this long for them to make a movie about him. Um, I I think he's a fantastic actor. His comedic time is obviously on point, but I think he hit the dramatic points that needed to be hit in this movie. Um, I thought it was very well written. I. I, I love the sidekick. What's what's his friend's name? He's he's T. in the new, Miller. Yes, I think he's <laughs> hilarious. I love him. I I hadn't really seen him in anything until Deadpool, and I think he's fantastic. He's also very good in uh, Silicon Valley on HBO. Oh yeah, is it's that a it? very good show. I haven't seen it, but I've heard good things I about like it. it. It's I a think, funny show. Yeah, I think he's great. Everybody's pretty good in that one. Um, and let's not forget his pivotal role as HUD in Cloverfield. Oh, it's true. We oh, were just yeah, talking about this yeah, earlier yeah. off mic. <laughs> He's the one who carries the camera yeah. through most of the movie. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I totally forgot he was in Cloverfield. You're right. Um, but yeah, I think Deadpool's fantastic. I think it hits all the points that you need a superhero movie to hit. But it's, like I said, the anti-hero movie. And I think it's really great. Um, it's It feels fresh to have... A rated R superhero movie. It, it gives like because we always talk about Marvel movies have a specific feeling. Colin and I talk about this a lot about they have a formula for these superhero movies. They all feel the same in a sense, even though some of them are better than others. They all have the same feel, and this one broke that mold. And I thought that was really great. So yeah, Deadpool's my number five. It's a great movie. Is his name really HUD in? In, yeah, like heads up display, yeah, huh? Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh my uh-huh. god, I never realized that. <laughs> oh uh-huh. my god, yeah. All right, well, there it is. 
All right. Well, my number five, I'm going to go with uh, Shane Black's The Nice Guys with uh, Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe. It's a uh, return to form for Shane Black. I've been a fan of his since he wrote the original Lethal Weapon. And then, you know, I found out he wrote Monster Squad. And all sure, that right. But Lethal Weapon was where I, you know, learned the name. And then it was like, I'm going to pay attention to everything that this guy does, you know, from Lethal Weapon, Lethal Weapon uh, 2 story. Um Yes. Well, the last action Until hero is unfortunate. Of course. <laughs> but, you know. Unfortunate, you sh- shame. Shame on you. Yeah. Last Boy Scout is last a Boy Scout. You know, goddamn classic. Last uh, Long Kiss Goodnight. And then. He was uh, in Predator. The classic yeah. uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. The classic. It does feel. That, that is a legit. Well, not a classic, but to it's me, a, I mean, to it's us, a like fantastic to me. movie that a lot of people haven't seen. Yeah. And uh, the nice guys feels like a companion piece to that. There's a lot of similar things. He has mm-hmm. the two, the mismatched duo, private investigators who get into a Los Angeles uh, conspiracy. He does love LA. The way above their heads. It doesn't take place on Christmas, but the end of it does. Yes. Yeah. You know. um, but the interplay between Ryan Reynolds and Russell Crowe is really funny. The jokes, you know, Shane Black has a way of just capturing the dialogue of these characters and the way that they speak to each other, which is fresh, exciting. Twists happen that just, you know, he just goes against what expectations are Mm -hmm. for any given scene, you know, and just, you know, all of a sudden, like, it'll take a left-hand turn. Yes, Um, very much so. Yeah, really funny. It's set in the 70s, so that also kind of brings this kind of quirkiness to it. I Mm -hmm. don't think it's as good as Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. No, it is not. It's a little long, but... But as far as this type of noir, um, it's like a thriller, but it's... A comedy at the same time. Mm-hmm. It's a detective noir. But yeah. it doesn't feel like, comedy. It doesn't really feel like a comedy comedy, right? No. It's like it's, the, are, it's like the situations. Comedy rises from the situations. Right. Where you don't have comedy com, you know, comedy actors just mugging at the this is the right. the kind of humor that I don't like is where you just get funny people in there and they just ad lib and riff yeah. off of each other mm-hmm. and then the editor figures it out later. How dare this you is... bag on Judd Apatow like that? <laughs> oh, if you're going to name names. So, uh, but, but this is specifically written in the script for these lines and this stuff to pay off. There's things that are introduced at the beginning of the movie that pays off like later on. He can't smell. Almost, yeah. He can't smell. I know, the, the whole German, the Hitler thing. <laughs> I mean, like, it's like, it's not even made a point of, but like Ryan Reynolds or Ryan uh, Gosling's character has like this Nazi fetish, which is really weird. <laughs> but they don't really mention it all, but it plays off in these like beats that yeah. establish who he is, you know? Uh, so it's really sharply written, really well directed. I think it's a recovery from Shane Black after he did Iron Man 3, which was after Kiss yeah. Kiss Bang Bang. But uh, you should definitely check it out. Uh, the Nice Guys. Number five. Sean, you're up. Number four. Number four. Uh, the Nice Guys almost made it. It was this close to being in my top five. But what I think that was a out- pretty wide. I'm just saying that was like an inch. Oh, yeah. All That's right. Not uh, like, let's you know, put down a, a little bit more. All right. I narrowed <laughs> yeah, it. Right. It's a little, it's more like a centimeter at this well, point. Well, Captain America Civil War almost made it on mine. It is. It's also on my list right here. I'm just like, ah, it's very close. Uh, but I think what beat it is 10 Cloverfield Lane. Mm. I really like this movie, um, especially it's a really it's a really great thriller to me. Like, I think it's got uh, uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. It's got John Goodman. It's got John Gulliger Jr. And those are the three characters for most of this movie. You get a mm-hmm. few uh, outside characters who kind of jump in every now and again. But other than that, it's those three locked in a bunker for most of this movie. And they all do extremely well, especially John Goodman. Like, it's a it's a great role for him, especially you cast uh Dan Connor in this type of role it's like he's playing against a character he's you know uh characters he's played before in the past so to see him as the uh as the threat in this movie like i think it works really well cuz you know he's uh he'll throw you off guard with what you expect with you know uh uh you know, like i said Dan Connor the big soft teddy bear of a guy mm-hmm. and to to be a threat in this movie like it's he plays it really well 
Um, it's written really well. Um, I well, they play it both like he's a, both a savior and a yes. threat. Like you don't know which side he's on, and then you how don't. bad is it? Right? Or maybe he's just uh, a savior with eccentricities. Mm-hmm. Sure. Or is he like? <clears throat> or yeah, or deeply, is nothing yeah. right? Or is nothing going on? He's just troubled because he's paranoid about things. Mm-hmm. And so there's that whole guessing game throughout this entire movie, and just. Um, just uh, the thrilling points of that, like I really liked. It's really well written. I do have a few problems with kind of like the ending of the movie, um, because I mean the movie was where it made, becomes a Cloverfield sequel, w- right? Where it does become in the because it almost feels like you know they cut off the end of a movie and added this onto it, like because I mean this movie was being made as its own thing. It was, I think, discovered by J.J. Abrams, or um, uh, they took it and they kind of, like, we'll take this movie, which was a separate entity, and add it to our Cloverfield universe. And so we're going to add a little bit, something else to the end of this movie, which Mm -hmm. happens to be an alien invasion part of it. Um, Well, that was always going to be there. Was it? Yeah, it was always going to be an alien invasion. It's just they... They changed it slightly, I think, to tie it more specifically into the Cloverfield. I mean, at the end of it, in the script, she sees, like, I think they're outside Chicago. Right. She sees Chicago burning in the background. But is that that. it as far as that goes? Maybe there there isn't the whole, yeah, you're right, chasing through the cornfield. There's, there's there's like, an attack from a spaceship in this. Like, I get get the uh, seeing the horizon being destroyed in yeah. the distance and seeing like that it is part of that and all that, that I like, but it turns into like her being turned, uh, Mary Elizabeth and Winstead turn being turned into like a heroine at the end, having to destroy an alien ship, her deciding to stop running away from problems that she's had in the past and go towards the fight, which is the city on the horizon to help fight the, the alien menace that has come down. Um, but I, you know, it's not bad in any regard. But I mean, that uh, most of that movie is a very well constructed thriller um, that I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's my number four movie for this year. I'm throwing out a retroactive spoiler warning. Oh shit! <laughs> Sorry. There's aliens Sorry. and shit, and yeah. uh, there's Molotov cocktails. Hopefully, you've read and, uh, something or heard something by now. Hopefully, at this point. But uh, yeah, it was really good. I liked it. Uh, my number four would have to be The Jungle Book, uh, directed by um, John Favre. John Favre, based on the book by Rudyard Kipling. Favre, um, so, based on so, the movie so, by Disney. Favre. Based on the cartoon I didn't see uh, it. by Disney. You did yeah. not see it? No. No. Um, I'm sure at some point I will. Yeah, no, it's really, it's, it's really fantastic. Um, it's, it's much more... It's. I mean, it's much more intense than the cartoon. A lot of people sure. are just assuming that it's gonna be a complete uh, replication of the cartoon. It's. It's not. It goes more in depth. It's. It's a lot more similar to the book than the cartoon ever was. This is part of the. Um, uh, is it the Disney who's doing the live action? Yeah, because yeah, they're gonna do Beauty and the, and the Beast and, and everything. Yeah, they've done Cinder- Dragon. They did Cinderella. Mm-hmm. Was it Cinderella? Or yeah. yeah, Cinderella. 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 Beast they Dragon. basically did Sleeping Beauty with, with Maleficent. Maleficent. They, right. Yeah. 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 And they're going to be doing Beauty and the Beast. Mm-hmm. Mining their properties and turning them into live action right. features. Yes. But with this one, they, they totally <laughs> nailed it. It was it was fantastic. I was worried, obviously, um, animals being done in CGI can be very... Some of the best work ever. I, hear I mean, it's like, it's no, state of the art. Yeah, that's, you know? I was worried about it at first. I'm yeah. like, oh, animal CGI, this is going to be hard to watch. It's fantastic. Yeah. This not movie not is... animal CGI, oh. but the entire world's created. The, yeah, the whole the like, jungle. Man, yeah. boy, they did that in Avatar. Oh, you haven't right, seen that. I haven't oh. seen it, but I'm talking like photorealistic, no. like... Yeah, they did that in superior. Avatar. <laughs> eh, it still looks like a big cartoon. Um, no, it doesn't. It looks like it's there. I don't know. Yeah. Does it? Oh yeah, because uh, I've actually seen. I mean, I'll watch it at some point. People, Maybe probably. The blue not. people still look CGI. Yeah, but the Jungle Book does not. That looks like a tiger. It looks like a big giant gorilla. With like the voices of Idris Elba, Scarlett Idris Johansson, Elba, Scar- Scarlett Johansson, Bill, Bill Murray, Murray. Yeah. Ben Kingsley, oh. Christopher Walken. It's fantastic. Oh, he plays uh, the orangutan. The, yes, it's so great. And and they and they sing. I wasn't sure if they were going to do the songs from the cartoon, um, but they did. Christopher Walken. Um, animated the, movie. What? Animated movie. Yeah. Cartoon. 
sorry. My apologies. <laughs> it's an anime. Oh, oh boy. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. How dare you call it a cartoon? Anyway. <clears throat> it's fantastic. Um, I grew up with that anime. Oh, God. How dare you. But it's on your list. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, the story is is wonderful. The, it, it's wonderfully directed. John Favreau did a fantastic job. Um, and I, I heard that he's going to be doing the live action Lion King now, too. Which, oh, yeah. If, if, of course. Obviously. But after seeing this, I have complete faith in that movie because this was amazing. Um, the story is really wonderful. Um, the I'm not sure the little kid's name that stars in it because he's the only, obviously he's the only um, actual actor that is seen in the movie. Neil C- Sethi? CT? I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> I don't know. But um, he's, he's wonderful. Um, this movie really surprised me. I, I didn't have... I wasn't really excited to go see it. I just happened to go see it and it, it really surprised me. Um, I was really excited about it. I think it came out in the spring. I want to say I'm not early. Positive. It felt early. I'm not positive. Let me pull that up. See. Yeah. April. Um, it came out in April and this was the first movie that I was like, this is the best movie I've seen of the year so far. It, it really impressed me. Um, I recommended it to everyone when it came out. I still recommend it. I think it's, I think it's really great. It's not just a family movie. That's the thing. Everyone's like, oh, I don't want to watch a kid's movie. It's not a kid's movie. It really isn't. It's it's just a very well done movie. Um, so that's my number four. Jungle Book. All right. My number four is uh, Nicholas Winding Refn's The Neon Demon. Oh, this wow. is a movie that I have a contentious relationship with. Yeah. <laughs> because... It's like you fight and don't like each other, but then you have like passionate sex on the stairs. Yeah, every yeah now and it's again, that and kind of like, obsessive oh, yeah. relationship yeah. with uh, his movies, specifically like Only God Forgives. I, you know, just kept going back to that thing over and over and over again. It was abusive, an abusive I mean, relationship. Yeah, I was just say. Uh, you have this little smirk on your face right now. I can because see it. I enjoyed so... it. I enjoyed it so much. That was the thing. Yeah, you're a drug. I enjoy pain. And the same thing applies to uh, the Neon Demon. Even though I think it's probably a better movie than Only God Forgives. It but I may better. be saying that because the subject matter is more appealing to me. It's about a young girl who goes, you know, a model, you know, she goes into a modeling career and it turns out there. Well, how can I leave this vague for the spoiler free? Mm. There are sinister things afoot that put this movie the closer evils to of the, the modeling world. <clears throat> right. Mm. Yes. Bring it more into horror movie territory, not the way that you expect, you know, as far as like the way that uh, is templated gothic horror or whatever. This is somebody doing something that's like, well, it's definitely horrifying, you know, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, and it's a, and very striking in its own way. It's one of the most beautiful movies. But I think this goes that's a description you could use on any uh, winding ref and film drive forward right um but he gets lost on these kind of um dream quest moments in his films where um they become psychedelic and start to become all about the symbols that you're seeing and so this becomes like those moments where you're like all right i gotta you know what does this mean what does he mean with this how do i feel about it what do i mean this is the kind of stuff that brings you back, you know, to it, I suppose, after, uh, you know, multiple times. But it has a feeling, and, you know, again, I'm saying I'm a big fan of Dario Argento's Suspiria. I've made no... Uh, 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 yeah, no qualms about <laughs> it. No qualms either. about it, right? This feels like this is a movie that takes place in the uh, uh, same universe, something... There's the idea of you get three women together and it's sinister. It feels without actually having witchcraft there. It's mm. like witchcraft feels like it's represented, right? Like uh, somebody has some control over somebody, maybe. Yeah. But it's created by the group of them being together. If that makes any sense. There. Yes. Yeah. 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 An intangible yeah. evil force that's commit that is uh called into being by these people. Influenced by these women. Yeah. Among these women. Because they yeah. have met each other. Yeah. Because they're in their own, you know, not like maybe even willfully in you know, some ways. And the color palette, I mean, again, I can't stress it enough. It is, I think, the most perfect 
uh, visual experience or, you know, beautiful visual experience that I've seen this year. And I got to see it in theater, which is one of those things where I'm always like, man, you know, there's certain movies in the past I wish I would have seen. And like these ones, I'm like, you know, taking these memories and going like, I saw that movie projected Damn. on a 20 mm-hmm. foot fucking screen. And Neon Demon was one of those. You're like, I saw it. Yeah. But Lords of Salem would have been one sure. of them. Like that's one of those, like, you know, <sighs> you know, a visual they're, experience. They're almost, but they're almost like intangible in some way once they've passed. Sure. Because it's like either you were there when the experience Right, it's like happened, it's happening right now. Yeah, or you missed it and then it became like a thing where we talk about it or like, oh, Suspiria is really awesome. It, right, but you, know, you can't you explain can't like what I was seeing right then right. as yeah. that was there. Yeah. And I remember the raw sensation of seeing that movie the first time. But yeah, I would say uh, The Neon Demon. Do I recommend it? I do, but you know... Again, it comes with a caveat of there's a certain type of person who's going to dig it. And there's a certain type of person who's going to say this is some alien fucking thing that's landed in my lap. And why did you, you know, even recommend this? Because it sucks. It's some artsy, pretentious thing. But if you're on its wavelength. I'm very pretentious. I don't know. Well, you, I think you should see it. It's, I, I'm, you, I, it's, you it's on my it. list. I you need to see, see this it. movie. Yeah, it's because it has... That's one of those movies that has a, a rhythm and a flow and a visual style that kind of carries you through. And Keanu Reeves is in it, doing like oh, the best work he of his is. career. Really? Oh, He's yeah. in it. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. I had no see idea. That coming. And <laughs> Abby Lee is like she should do more shit. Like seriously, like and, she's uh, uh, not fanning. only beautiful, but well, she was in Mad Max Fury Road. She's a model. Oh, yeah. which which she's one? one? She of the was wives. the wife who mm, got yeah. the one who falls off. Yeah. She's pregnant. Yeah. Oh. Isn't that what's it? Spoiler what's warning. Abby Sorry. Lee. <laughs> Abby Lee. But she's in this and yeah. So yeah, I think you should check. If you haven't heard of this movie, you got to go look it up. It's on Amazon Prime. They funded it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, check out Neon Demon. Did they fund it? Yeah, yeah, Amazon. Yeah, it was, it's I think an their Amazon first film. one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Their they first Amazon it. Studios wow. film. But it went to theaters from sure. Broad Green Entertainment or whatever. So right. it's like, an experience. That's the thing about that movie. Because I remember when I told you I saw it. You said, what do you think? I was like, it's fucked up. Yeah. And you said, but did you hate it? And I was like, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. No. You'll <laughs> remember. <laughs> that's a, It's one of those movies where you will remember moments from it, yeah. like, years on. Mm. You know? Kind of things. Damn it. I'm going to have to borrow this from you. <sighs> My turn? Okay. Number three? Uh, number number three. three. We're going to do... Number three is The Witch. The Witch came out in uh, what? What do we say? Fe- February. March, February of this January? year. February. February. Uh, February. It was one of those. It's one of those festival movies, which we seem to get like at least one every year. Where you hear about this movie that's making the festival rounds. Or the festival uh, horror movie. Yes, the that's, festival yeah, horror yeah, movie. That's that's the key, that's, that's the key to it. Specifically, the Sundance Festival horror yes. movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, I, I mean, I, I really like this movie. Um. When it came out, I mean, it's it's what a, a New England folktale is what is like the subheading under this movie. And what I felt when I first saw it is like it really does feel like somebody just went back in time, set the camera down, and kind of watched what would happen to a family in this time in an era where there was uh, the possibility or the thought of a possibility that members of your family could be bewitched. They could be taken over, and there could be actual evil that infiltrates your family, and the paranoia that is that, that comes from that of of what your family thinks if there is like if you've been bewitched, and it's horrifying because we see this from the point of view of the uh, of the oldest daughter, um, uh, Thomason, mm-hmm. um, and her perspective of it. It's it's horrifying to see like. People that you're trying to explain things to that don't believe you, like that are accusing you of things that are that can be horrible and that, you know, you're telling the truth about something, but nobody believes you and you're being accused and you're being persecuted for things, you know, you didn't do. And I think that's where the horror of this movie comes. It also comes from a uh, a, a black the supernatural. The su- yeah. the, that's <laughs> I'm like, I'm it also comes from like, a, you're selling what, it no, like we'll it's. Uh, yeah. But we're also getting like it also comes from the actual supernatural that comes from it. The yeah. like uh, a black ram 
Black Phillip, Black Phillip, who is just an ominous presence throughout the movie and more so later on, because I don't want to. I mean, if you haven't seen it by now, obviously, you are, should. Are, we, are we giving spoilers or how? We... But I mean, we we're get, trying not to. And we're trying not to. But like <laughs> this is a new movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I mean, just the the paranoia that envelops this family who have gone out from their colony to strike a life of their own out in the middle of nowhere. And just it, I mean, I mean, they're cursed from then on, and it's just it's terrifying how it ends, the or how it 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 unfolds from that point, and it's just, and you got, I mean, the way um, uh, Roger Eggers Mm -hmm. was the name, the way he made Robert Robert Eggers, Eggers, yes, Um, the way he made this movie, I mean, he made it from like, especially he says that the dialogue that came in this movie was taken straight from like diaries and everything like mm-hmm. it's uh, period appropriate for stuff like this and i got to believe the situations that these people went through um looking at it would be horrifying to uh to experience um and i think you feel that horror watching this uh young woman go through this experience with her family and it's kind of a descent into madness one mm-hmm. by one for members of her family yep. and it really is it's kind of disturbing and, um, I mean, there's been many, there's pe- been people who have critiqued this movie who, I mean, uh, who I don't think understood kind of what they were getting into when they were going in to see it. But, um, I, it disturbed me. It's definitely, it's a horror movie to me to just watch what this family goes through. I, I definitely recommend it. Definitely. You know, number three for me, uh, a very good movie, the witch. Uh, once again, I'm piggybacking. My Damn number it, three Holly. is The Witch. <laughs> Come up with an original thought. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I didn't mean it. That's better. Um, <laughs> Jesus. No, I, I, this movie, I, oh God, I didn't, I didn't know what it was going to be like going into it. I just thought, oh, horror movie, it's The Witch. I know Colin loves period horror movies and. He made one. He did make one. <laughs> the Witch Finder. The Witch you can Finder. Find it on it's Amazon almost on instant video. <laughs> it's literally half the title of, yeah. uh, more than half the title of the movie that we're it, talking so about. So this is totally in my wheelhouse. <laughs> totally. But I, I had no idea what this movie was going to feel like. And I really do emphasize that you feel this movie. It's terrifying. It, it's, it, it just makes you, it makes you anxious to watch this movie because like, like Sean said, they, this family is in complete isolation. They're they're just in this small um, farm in the middle of nowhere. So you can just you can literally see how small these people must feel, and the fact that these people that it's her family, the people that she should trust more than anyone in the world, and they're all s- s- like slowly turning on each other, and it's just insane. And this whole time, you as an in the audience, you don't even understand. Are they turning on each other for legit reasons or not? Like you, you can't really, you, you can't really differentiate if what they're feeling is f- based on real evil or not, or if it's just if manifest being influenced. If it's just right. manifested in their mind, or if it, if they're actually being influenced, like it's it's so it, it's so jarring and. It's just, it's an intense movie. It really is. And I've heard that some people had a little trouble understanding it because they are using the proper, like, old English. Yeah. And it, it it is a little... What went we here for? <laughs> yeah. To, you know, yeah. But honestly, I don't think... Into I, this wilderness. I watch, right, I watch a lot of stuff that Into has older language like that, so I don't have a lot of trouble with it. But I can, but I don't think that really took away from the movie at all. No. I think you still follow it just, right. just as well. You still get yeah, it, even if you don't absolutely. get every piece of dialogue, which you can get later. But even if you don't get every piece, you still follow like the mood and what people are. You can still see what people are feeling. Right. Exactly. And I, I wasn't sure because obviously it's not a new concept. Like it's you know Salem witch trials. Like it's not it's not a new concept. But it felt like fresh storytelling. It really did. Is, I was like, this is, this is a scary story right here. And it just, it, it just felt like a new story, even though it's content we've covered before. It felt new. Just the different, the different turns that the story took, the different elements that the characters brought forth. It really was fantastic storytelling, and it's creepy as all hell. It's, it's not 
and there is gore. There's 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 some there's some instances that it's it's there's some bloodletting. It's unnerving. It really is. Um, but yeah, I recommend this movie. It's it's really an experience. The Witch. All right, my number wait, wait, three? three. Yeah, yeah we're on three. My <laughs> number three is a movie called Don't Breathe. Um, oh. One of the best times I've had at a movie this year. It's uh, Fede Alvarez, who is the director of the Evil Dead remake. This movie reunites him with his leading lady, Jane Levy. and uh, But this is the first original thing that he's yeah. done. So now it's like I loved the Evil Dead remake. I mean... Right now, I would rather watch that than the original, to be honest oh, with you, because I, I'm so familiar with the original. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the remake was so good. I mean, so good. It's like one of the best horror movies, I thought, you know, of uh, that year, you know, and possibly like, what you know, what do you got, a 10 year span? It's, it's pretty fucking good. Gory as all hell. Oh, yeah. Uh, highly energetic. It's got scare moments. It takes it seriously. You know, it's it's fantastic. A character who just won't die till the very end. Yeah, so this brings, uh, you know, uh, well, I mean, maybe you've heard the the idea, but it's more of a, it's not a gore fest, it's a suspense thriller. The word, the term Hitchcockian gets kind of bandied about, like willy nilly here or there. <laughs> yeah. It's like, is what he's doing Hitchcockian? So it's really. almost a uh, Spielbergian. <laughs> I remember moments, you know, like specifically in like, you know, I mean like Jaws or Jurassic Park. It's like, obviously those moments are inspired by Hitchcock. So, you know, I suppose you go back to Hitchcock as the originator of mm-hmm. the suspense, you know, how you edit for suspense. But there are yes. some awesome scenes in this film where... Um, Don't say anything. Well, no, I mean, but specifically without giving anything away, but, you know, like a long shot where the camera detaches from the main characters to show you something, an object on a floor or an object on a wall in a kind of a foreshadowing. It's like, you know, this is going to come into play later. Mm -hmm. uh, And it's just that kind of, you know, free floating camera. So the camera work there, the CG for going between floors the fact that they're showing you the stuff and you're putting it in your mind that this is going to come into effect later they they got a lot of mileage out of, uh, um, even when I thought, you know, I was sitting there going like, well, you know, it's like at this point the movie is over, right? The, a goal oh. of some of the character, you know, I'm trying to be vague, right? Be very vague. <laughs> I'm, I'm very watching vague. it tomorrow, Colin. <laughs> uh, so characters have a certain goal and at some point this goal is met. And you're like, okay, so where do you go? Yeah, the movie's over, and then it keeps going. You know, I mean, it and it, it for a legitimate reason. I mean, it it feels natural, organic to the story, but surprising because you didn't expect it when it happens. You're like, you know, and uh, this is going to be the movie, like we were saying with Neon Demon, that after you see it, you're going to remember, you know, moments of this, which probably to its detriment are going to define it in years forward, but. This is going to be the movie that you remember because of the turkey baster. Uh, so I mean, <laughs> you have that. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's a really, it's like a technical film. I think maybe that's why I appreciated it more than it is like an actor's movie. It's a director's show off movie, mm-hmm. right? This is a movie where you feel the director all the time during the movie like you know guiding you through this thing so i think in that respect i think it has made a star of fede alvarez and like we got to watch whatever this guy does next but this was uh definitely a high point of my movie going experiences in 2016 i look forward to watching it tomorrow and number two sean number two for me is a little movie called hell or high water starring jeff bridges chris pine and Ben Foster. Now, this is your, um, I mean, if you've seen, uh, it's a Texas heist movie, which, I mean, we've seen, uh, I think we've seen a few of these over the years. Um, you get things like, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, sure. No Country for Old Men. There it is, yeah. That's the one I was looking for. <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, it's one, you know, middle of Texas, uh, uh, a couple of guys who are uh, robbing banks, but for maybe a good cause. 
to them at least. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is it's uh, written by Taylor Sheridan, who's the guy who wrote Sicario. Yeah, that's and that, which was one of the best movies. One of, of the last best year. movies of last yeah. year. A real movie I really like. Mm-hmm. Um, written go uh, or see do, Sicario. Please go see Sicario. <laughs> I really liked it. I watched it again recently because I went bought still it. Still good. Still good. And that score, which is something I really like, because it's just a downer mm-hmm. like um, score. And I just it was really good. Yeah, and it's going into. Juarez yeah, going into Juarez, oh, it's yeah. like like you you said it before. It's like it's on a it's on a clock. It's yeah, on a ticker. It's, like, it's, it's just going and going and going. Doom. But the whole movie is like I watched it. And I'm like it's really good, and I liked it. And Taylor Sheridan, like uh, as a writer, he likes to stick within his like uh, Southern Texas. This is the stuff that goes around in this area. He sticks in there, but he writes it very well, and he writes these characters very well. Hell or high water. Um, the highlight. I mean, it's about. Two brothers who are um, a little bit of spoilers here. It's about two brothers who are go through and they're robbing banks within the uh, uh, I mean, within, you know, the middle of Texas. Uh, Jeff Bridges plays a uh, Texas, um, I think it's a sheriff or a, a, what should we call it? a marshal that is uh, following them uh, throughout this and trying to track them down. Um, why they're stealing from these banks, um, I won't give away. But it's, it's in the trailer. Um, is well, it, in is case it, you haven't seen the trailer, but but yeah. I mean, he's trying to he's basically trying to get back at the banks for kind of taking over. You know, yeah, the family uh, farm. The family like farm, but it's also it's more about um, you know how these big establishments are just bankrupting um, the 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 smaller folk. Like they're not. They're just kind of taking something away from the people who do, you know don't make a lot of money, and they're taking advantage of them. And this is their chance to kind of get back at them and take something back. Um, but it is kind of your quintessential Texas heist movie, but it's written very well. The characters are very well developed. Um, ben Foster, as an actor, kills it in this movie. He's the main comedic relief. He's very funny. Um, it's written very well. Also, Jeff Bridges is very funny. He's got a very uh, nice interaction with his uh, partner. In the movie, his partner is half, I think, half Mexican and half Indian, and Jeff Bridges kind of just kind of berates him for being that for most of the movie. Like, you can tell it's a very loving relationship, but they just bicker like an old couple for a long time, (laughs) and it's really funny. It's a very well-written movie. Um, It's kind of, you know... You know, if you see the uh, the Texas lawman chasing the criminal movie, but it's it's written to a, a higher level than what you may generally see. Um, I really enjoy this movie. I thought it was fun. Um, I yeah, I recommend it for you. It's it's a very entertaining movie. It sounds like a really good it's movie a really shot. I really like it. <laughs> I really it's fun to watch because again, like I said, Ben Foster kills it. He's very funny throughout the movie. Um, yeah, I, he does a really good job. I'm like, still he's the, waiting for Netflix to send me this fucking. See, uh, it, like, it's at Redbox, weeks, man. Go to Redbox yeah. and grab. It's it's thing. worth like, it. It's really fun. That. I still need to see Don't Breathe. I, it's I want to see La La Land. Like I feel like these yeah. movies would be on my list. Yeah, no, it's really it's a funny <laughs> movie and it's uh, it's really good. He's a really good uh, tension breaker as far as yeah. what they're doing in that movie. It's really good. It's a good cast. I like. It's a really movie. good cast. I like it. They're yeah. they're getting nominated for awards and everything. But yeah, it's really good. Speaking of good casts, my number two, Captain America Civil War. I love Marvel movies. I love the Avenger movies. Love me some Avengers. Um, And this movie, I thought... It was not what I expected. um, In terms of, like, the storyline. There was... There was a lot more... um, There's a lot more depth in emotion in this one as opposed to some of the other ones. In regards to the relationship with the with these characters that are supposed to be this this team of heroes. And I loved that about this. I love the conflict, the the emotional distress between these people that are supposed to be like dear friends. I thought it was really fantastic. Um again, it's it's Marvel. It's the big Avenger movie of the year. So you know it's big budget. The 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 stunts, the the um Effects, all of it is is great. It's exactly what you expect from your Marvel movie. It hits all the points that you want from your Marvel movie. It does, um, and I I think that it's great for doing that. I I I think all the Marvel movies for me, when it comes to the Avenger movies, they all hit points that I need them to hit, and that they always satisfy. Um, Who's your favorite Avenger? 
Why would you make me pick? I was just curious if this would lead into like, well, it's Captain America. Then like, is there something to the Captain America movies that they get right where like Avengers Age of Ultron doesn't, even though it's a I similar think this is more group revealing of Colin. Movie. Than it no, is I was just Hollis. curious. I, I don't know if I could, because every time I think I have a favorite, I change my mind. Mm. So like yeah. I, I would always say it's Thor. And then I'm like, well, I really like Captain America. And so it's hard for me to choose. I actually really like the villains. Usually that's mm. I'm a huge Loki's fan. Of, I'm really a good. huge I, fan of Loki. You know this about me. I always fight between uh, Captain America and Iron Man. Yeah, no, it they're, really they're is, good. Like, it's, it's almost the perfect movie because you're just like, which one do I like? <laughs> which yeah. one's more? Because I like them both, but my Captain fa- America surprisingly my favorite, has um, a very popular My favorite one. Marvel Avenger movie is Captain America the Winter Soldier. That's my it's absolute favorite. Good. And Bucky the Winter Soldier is one of the reasons I love this movie so much. He is such a fantastic character. I love that they get, they've get they been getting to explore this character more. And I love that now he's... He's in this place where he's battling his his old his old winter soldier identity with remembering who he really was as Bucky. And I think it's really great. I love that depth. I think that's the reason I love Loki so much. You know, it's it's I love that that torn that that torn um depth of character. I think it's fantastic. And I think they really hit that in this one. And it's really funny. There's, there's parts in all the, in all the adventure movies that are just really funny. We're the sitting in the car and they're just like, yeah. When he kisses, <laughs> can he, you move your seat? <laughs> no. <laughs> and it's, it's and they get movie. their ass kicked and he's always like, I hate you. <laughs> like, it's just, uh, it's, it's a great fantastic. dynamic between those two. Yeah. The, it's, it's got that buddy <laughs> comedy that you want. It's, it's just, it's really great. It, the, they're all satisfying movies. I think that's why I like them so much. And this one definitely doesn't disappoint in that area. Um, like like I said, it's not my number one favorite of the Avenger movies, but I thought it was fantastic. And it was one of my favorite movie experiences of the year. All right. My number two is a movie called Green Room, uh, starring the late Anton Yelchin uh, oh, and yeah. Patrick, the great uh. Patrick Stewart in like this low budget movie about a, a punk rock band who gets in over their head trapped in a green room in some redneck like neo-nazi bar in the wilds of oregon yeah (laughs) oregon yeah Uh, um jeremy sonier yeah because uh uh he had done previously a movie that i really liked called blue ruin which if you haven't seen this movie you should check it out uh it's a revenge film but it's like messy a revenge film if like you were the protagonist <laughs> yes <Yeah>. like you <laughs> and you that, didn't know what you were doing yeah yeah yeah. because in revenge movies the guy's always like he was a cop who spent all this time in jail and like you know and he knows and what he's doing the, yeah <laughs> yeah but no imagine it's you and you're going to go get revenge on, you know. Yeah, so it just kind of, nothing goes the way that it's expected to in that type of movie. The star of that film, Mason... Uh, Macon Blair. Macon Blair is in Green Room in a yes. minor supporting uh, role. But, uh, yeah, I mean, all the performances are fantastic. The um, the the band, I guess, and this is like the thing that it all hinges on. It's like the band feels like a real legitimate yeah, uh, really unit, you know. Yeah, yeah. And when the uh, the violence comes, I mean, even the bad guys. It's like it's one of those movies where they have a um, central or core like logic to them, mm-hmm. which kind of lulls you over to the like. Well, I mean, they sound reasonable, right? Well, yeah. it, may, right. Like, it's, it sounds reasonable. It makes sense. Yeah, like, it makes yeah. sense, and it kind of like you're like, well, you know, I mean, like I can see their point. I mean, of Three, four yeah, people. Right, yeah, they yeah. killed three. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that well, you're kind not of wrong. Yeah, it's like, that's yeah. how I do it. That's how I do it. Yeah, it's very intense. Uh, when the violence comes, it is shockingly brutal. I think basically to underscore the dire situation that these people are stuck in, and then the ingenuity that they come up with to try and get themselves out. A really good movie. It's better than Blue Ruin, if you can believe that. I mean, I, I really think yeah. highly of Blue Ruin, but uh, Green Room aces that. And so this Jeremy Selnier, Selnier, Sonier, yeah. Sonier guy, 
Uh, next thing he does, like I'm there opening day, I, you know, it's right. It's like, like you said, one of those directors you follow and it's yeah. like, he did blue room. He did green room. It's like the next one I'm there. Well, you think the next one's going to have like red something in the title. I mean, he, he should, <laughs> he should. His color trilogy. Yeah. I noticed that actually like, so everything I've picked, I watch nice guys cause it's Shane black. Right. Uh, uh neon demon, Nicholas winding Riffin, Riffin. Yeah. Uh, my third movie, which I can't remember what it was now. And my second, <laughs> yeah, I don't remember any of my movies at this point. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there's a lot right, of alcohol right, yeah. being don't consumed breathe. here. Awesome. Don't, yeah, don't breathe. breathe. Don't breathe. Finney Finney Alvarez. Alvarez. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and number two, Jeremy Selnia. So, and number one also has a director that next thing that they do, I'll be watching. So, uh, yeah, I recommend you check out uh, Green Room. So, here we come. Number one, Sean, what do we got? This is going to sound a little repetitive, but it's Green Room. It is my number one movie for 2016. Um, everything Colin said, like, the thing that stood out for me in this movie is, like, I really like, like, it's it's cast very well. Like Colin said, that band feels like a that real band. band. Yeah. It's got, uh, you know, Anton I've Yelchin. known people like that kind right. of thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Anton Yelchin, the late Anton Yelchin, had, uh, uh, and I can't, and I mean, other people have expressed it better, but Jesus, to the loss of that actor to that community, it's really, it's, it completely, it's, it's horrible because he's, he's so very good. And I'm just, and I'm looking at that loss on a very superficial level is what I lost. Yeah. As, but, as, uh, it's a actress. role that yeah. should have got him. You know, it's like right. Green Room is a part that people would notice that would yes. get you something. If Chekhov wasn't big enough. Right. Right. Yeah. That you'd get something else off of it. So yes. that's why you feel like this has been cut short. It really it does. And it really has. He was only like 27 years old. It, like it has been cut short. But he did. He does very well. Um, Aaliyah Shawcat, who plays, I think it's the one girl in the band. Um, she does very well. Um, and, and like it's uh, extremely, it's cast very well. The uh, oh, Imogen Poots and Imogen uh, Poots, uh, yeah, and yeah. Elchin, Anton Yelchin were one of my favorite overlooked movies. Fright Night, the Fright remake. Night. <laughs> <laughs> so they were in a movie together before what, Green Room. Was she the girlfriend? Yeah, yeah, really? Yes. Yeah, she must. She have dark Different hair. hair. Yeah, oh, and that's why. Because I'm Green just like yeah. she's very noticeable in, mm. in her look. Yeah, I'm just like wow. I gotta go back mm. and watch that because that's also another good movie. But. Um, it's a it's a very good movie, very well cast. The thing that stands out to me in this movie is, um, I mean, like we said, Jeremy Saunier is very good. Uh, he's a writer director of both the movies he's done, um, and he does uh, very well. Um, I've always enjoyed, uh, and he brings in Macon Blair from Blue Ruin back into this movie, uh, who I think who was a producer in this movie as well. He, he's getting him more involved in. He was like it, a childhood friend or something. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah. yeah, childhood friend who he put in this movie, uh, and they're just they're working closer together in more movies they do. Um, uh, like you said, it's a it's a director that's just like the next thing he does, mm. like I'm there immediately. Yeah. This is like the Quentin Tarantino, he, yeah. like. You know, you come up with a solid, better than solid first movie. Yes. And follow it up with an even, you know, like, even I didn't better. think. better. I just wanted you to match the first one, right. dude. And you, like, knocked it out of the fucking park right. for the second one. It's like, yeah, where yeah, do you go from you, here? Like, you've got me. Like, whatever you release next, I'm there for you. So it's, um, I mean, well, I will support that director. But the thing that got me about this movie was, like, the violence is what uh, affected me for this movie. Because it feels so, it, I mean, it feels real. Like, because mm-hmm. the whole point is like the band uh, after an incident the band gets stuck in the green room of this movie and at a certain point they decide to like make their escape from this club and so they sort of they they branch out and I mean they go off in di- different directions and I mean some characters meet their demise but they meet it in ways that just it's almost makes you feel uncomfortable because it feels so real like def- like something like this could definitely happen as far as i'm concerned and the violence towards these characters it just it makes you feel like it makes you feel for them and it's uncomfortable but but it makes you feel something um and i like that it that this movie can do that to me um it's very well acted um and i haven't even mentioned patrick stewart who is yeah. frightening mm-hmm. as the head yeah. of a skinhead group this will all is, be over soon yes yeah. Yeah. Who, oh my god <laughs> like it's a it's a very it's a great performance from patrick stewart who i'm glad decided that he should do this role mm-hmm. um as just a bad guy and he does it so it's very it's a very cold character to play and i really like that he did it 
Um, it's very well done all around. Green Room, highly recommend it. Very good stuff. Well, in case you weren't convinced, my number one is Green Room. That's like three in a row. That's like two, one, one. (laughs) Yeah, I everything that Colin and Sean just said. This movie, this movie gets to you. It It really does. Mm. I, I was watching it and I was just horrified. Like, here's the thing: if a movie makes me change my mind about a character because of the violence that's inflicted upon them. I remember watching this and I was like, this band, these snobby little brats, like I hated (laughs) these characters. I was like, these, they suck. I feel like they're probably going to die and I'm okay with that. And then when things started happening to them, I was like, fuck, this is like making me feel like almost sick. That's just so wretched. There's a scene. You didn't like the eight rights? I, I like the, 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 <laughs> their decision to come up with an anti uh, is almost an anti alt right or anti Nazi song to start their set in that club. It's it's like very it's a, punk. It's, a, it's a very, very punk, yeah. rebellious. very punk, yeah. very rebellious. Very, it's a great idea. Not very to, smart. No, not at so all. Stupid. But <laughs> but very good. So stupid. Fuck off, or Nazi punks. Fuck off. Fuck yeah. Like, <laughs> but seriously, Nazi did, punks. the, the Nazi punks. <laughs> The violence in this movie, I can't even express how horrifying it is. It is. It's, it it's, it's is. real. Oh, fucking his hand, dude. That's what I was just going to say. Oh. He, oh. When hand. he sticks his hand out that door, and I'm just like, they haven't even shown what's happening yet. No, they don't show screaming. it. And I'm like, oh my God. You get the aftermath, and it's oh horrifying. My God. But it's... one that gets me is when they're choking the big guy out. Oh my God. And she just comes in with the blade, yeah. with the box cutter, and oh. just... Yeah. just I, don't know what, so, I don't know what else yeah. to do. It's so yeah. realistic. Oh. It, it oh. really is. It's... If you have a weak stomach, I do not recommend <laughs> watching this movie. Yeah. But it, it, it's it's odd to find a movie that makes you feel that deeply, yeah. and that's what's incredible about this movie. It's it's you really believe what is happening. You really, and it's nothing about it feels fake. Like if like this, it feels like a real band. This feels like a real sketchy place out in the middle of nowhere. It just has, and it's dire in what you think. Like you always hope for your characters to get out, but it's dire in the fact that realistically, this is probably what would happen in this situation. Exactly. (sighs) It's just, it's what nightmares are made of. It really is. It's so intense. Um, Patrick Stewart is fantastic. I've I've never seen him in a part like this, and it's just incredible. Where's all the award nominations for Green Room? I know. Seriously. Where are they? Seriously. It's it's amazing. Uh, everybody's forgotten about it. Yeah, I yeah, came out too early. Everybody's uh, forgotten about it. Yeah, what's up? yeah. it wasn't released during Oscar time. Yeah, yeah. that's Fuck that's people. what's up. Yeah, <laughs> or their tastes are so very contrary to ours. I mean, but clearly, obviously, this should be a movie recognized for something, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, what, what 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 these Oscar movies that are released? Like, oh, it made me feel. Like so much, oh, dude, just man! Like, come on, Moonlight is gonna win because you got uh, <laughs> Moonlight, gay, Manchester black, by the sea. Uh, drug dealing, yeah, you know, like winner. all the basic right. oh, it's like I Oscar rec- so it, white, but that's that people stuff. like looking at something and recognizing it as something they should pay attention yeah. to or something like that, yeah. not feeling something. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. this yeah. movie like made I, most people it. here yes. feel something. Yeah. Like this movie made me uneasy. Like I felt it in my gut when I was watching this mm-hmm. movie. That's mm-hmm. That's an amazing thing for a film to do. It mm. really is. Uh, this movie is an experience. Definitely check out Green Room. That's my number I'm gonna one. I'm going to watch it again right now. <laughs> I know. It kind of makes me wonder if I chose poorly. The only thing about Green Room that ever bugged me, it's a slight thing, but it keeps it away from number one, is the Desert Island pick, which feels very overly <laughs> It made me so mad. It made me so mad. Well, it's very sentimentalized, I guess, which is the only real false note in an otherwise perfect fucking mm. movie. So I'm going to flip the script here. My number one movie is going to be The Witch. You ah, guys, number three movie. What did I tell you? I I'm going to say this is you when you one. went up and took your break, oh, yeah. I, I was, we were taking bats. Well, and, you're like, where's The Witch on this list? <laughs> like, well, it's like, number no, one. No, I knew I'm like, next one's going to be Green Room, then it's The Witch. <laughs> I, said, I, knew yeah. it. I said The Witch, then Green Room. I have money. <laughs> 
Well, The Witch, I think the same reason I would pick this as the my number one movie of the year is because of the same thing that I felt when I saw Mad Max Fury Road oh, last yeah. year. When I yeah. saw these movies, I knew instantly a new, like, genre classic had happened. You know, like, this is going to be, be a movie, I think, The Witch will define the genre. Maybe... Uh, more critically than with audiences because sure. it seems like audiences went expecting something else because horror Definitely. has been uh, horror to the mainstream audience is a movie like uh, we, you know, the Ouija sequel Shocking, uh, lights out or right. the conjuring. Right. And yes. I'm not slamming those right. movies or, you know, because each one of those I think uh, were decent in their right. own way. And they lend something to the whole thing. Yeah. But the witch stands outside of those, I think, in a different kind of. Um, the previous movies I mentioned will be very 2016 when we watch them later. 20 years from now, that's going to be a, a time capsule of 2016. Sure. Lights out, that's what movies were like in 2016. The witch has a timeless quality. This is the thing yeah. that's going to make it so 20 years from now, you can watch it and have the same experience that you have today. Because the filmmaking techniques, this guy went and recreated. I mean, I know it's press release material. We went and sawed the wood the same way that they did. But even beyond that, right, just watching it, I haven't had an experience since the movie Heaven's Gate, right, where I felt transported to (laughs) Do you people know that time gap? Yeah, uh, 1980, right, uh, when this movie came out. But the it feels like someone stuck you in a time machine. And mm-hmm. took you back to a period of time. The only thing with the witch, which I appreciate, is that it does go over to supernatural horror, which is my thing. It's mm-hmm. my jam. Like right off the bat, too. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's yeah. what I was saying. Goes you, for it. Yeah, when you were talking about your review, I'm like, but there is within like the first. I mean, when they get to the this family gets kicked out of the plant uh, the plantation. The uh, <laughs> they get I kicked mean, right. out of the. The settlement. The right. Township, yeah. yeah, I was thinking like the Plymouth something. Yeah, right, yeah. They get kicked out of the township and into the woods, and almost immediately it is shown to the audience that there's clearly a supernatural force yeah, the at work. Which exists. Yeah. So then everything that happens is like this is the influence of, of this witch, this you know, force that like they have to become aware of in some way. And when they do you know, the, in the form of the kid. I mean, even that becomes like this nightmarish thing. I mean, it's, mm. you know, one of the greatest performances by a child actor that oh, I maybe absolutely. have ever seen, yeah. right? Yeah. Because not only are you doing like some kind of crazy physical performance, but also the dialogue is uh, in a language, it's English, but like, I mean, come on, it's like ye old English, right? Yeah. This is not something that, you know, is conversation. Like the fucking King James version. Yeah, you yeah. may as well be speaking a foreign language yeah. at that point. Yeah. So you gotta have trust and that to guy's, be like to do that. Yeah. yeah. That guy's not gonna be nominated for an uh, 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 any kind of right. awards. Mm-hmm. Uh Anna Taylor Joy, the girl who plays Thomason, I know is in the movie Morgan. I haven't seen that yet. No. It's also and, in the uh, upcoming split. Split the mm-hmm. M Night Shyamalan film. Uh yeah, so there are you know films from this year. I think Split's twenty seventeen, but yeah, coming uh, up. We said that there's stuff that we haven't seen, but of uh, I I'm going back all the way to February. I'm going to say The Witch is a horror movie classic along the lines of like a Rosemary's Baby or something like that. I mean, it's uh, it's a size seism- seismic event, I think, in in horror movies, and uh, it's unfortunate. I think that um, audiences didn't appreciate it now, but I think they will. Uh, in yeah. the future when they look back because then you're so. going to have like the cinephile you know mm-hmm. uh, yes. horror fans will look back and say you know this really was something it's yeah. a disturbing film it's scary but it's not in uh, keeping with 2016's mm-hmm. yes. uh, Blumhouse uh, Fright not, Factor jump yeah. out so. is scary <laughs> right yeah but I've seen older stuff, so that's why it's kind of in my, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I also, uh, maybe I'm inflating it to number one because I have an affinity for that time period. So, like I said, uh, Witchfinder is available. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. It wouldn't be, yeah, do it. It's your podcast. Do it. Yeah. Only Robert Eggers did it better than me. And they say that he's doing a movie called uh, a remake of Nosferatu, Nosferatu next. Yeah. So I'm curious. 
I'm a little I mean, disappointed. A little like, disappointed, well, but if he's, he's doing, doing it, uh, like, all right. I'm curious, Originally, they sure. said he was doing a miniseries about Rasputin. And I'm like, well, yeah. of course, if the guy, like, I recreated the, you know, the, the time period so well, it's like, okay, so what's he going to do with the Rasputin? You know, it's like, I'm just curious. Whatever he does next, I yeah. want to see. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. So that, uh, does that wrap up? Our, what's the worst movie you've seen? Lightning Round. Worst movie you saw this year, Sean? Ha! Rogue One! Uh, oh, no. Jesus uh, Christ, really? <laughs> no, it, uh, not that's the worst one. That's just because one. that's the last thing you saw. Is, that, a, the, is it, that the worst it's, thing you It's really the last thing I saw. Like, I saw it yesterday. It's the last thing I saw. <laughs> yeah. uh, it wasn't great. Um, oh, wow. The, the worst? The worst? Yeah. No, no, it's no, out no. there. It's hanging out there. There's nothing no, no, to redeem it's it. The, it's, it's not the one. worst. It's uh, the worst thing you've seen. There's something. There's a movie this year that just pissed me off, and I can't remember it. Um... Transformers uh, Age of Extinction I have, was no, last I year. Watched, that was last year, Sean. I, haven't, I saw it part two, and then I haven't watched anything okay. since. I will not make that mistake. Uh, you can't just put me on the fucking spot, man. That was lightning round. Yeah. Uh, yeah nah. So it's Rogue One. Right right at this moment in time? <laughs> yes. Is that the most disappointing and not the worst? It's disappointing. It's not... That's, that's uh, I would say thing. it's not necessarily a... Bad movie. It's very disappointing. It's not. It's uh, all right. Rogue One is a. It's overwritten in some spots. It's messy in others, and it's not. Um, I I enjoyed Force Awakens much better. Um, even though that's a glossy retread of New Hope, and I know that, but it's not. Uh, Did you enjoy Rogue One? And <sighs> no. Oof. I didn't wow. enjoy it. Yeah. Like I was. I haven't seen it yet. So. No. At certain Neither. points, I was just like. It didn't. There's no emotional. To me, there's no emotional payoff in Rogue One, and to me, that's for a movie of that big scope. Uh, I think there should be. Um, maybe I'm expecting too much of this movie, but I, nothing. I, I felt nothing for this movie. Um, there are some very cool uh, scenes in this movie uh, regarding characters that we already know. And that's the best parts of this movie. And I won't go any farther into that. So it's all that. fan service is what you're saying. And basically it's an inconsequential storyline because we know the outcome. We, I mean, we already all know the outcome. And I mean... <laughs> they get the plans to the... Uh, they do. Alliance. That wasn't going to change at any point during this movie. So uh, that's... I mean, that's disappointing. Uh, the characters are, like I said, they're underwritten. And then some of motivations are overwritten, and I just don't like it. Didn't yeah, it didn't do anything for me. Like I'll never, I I will watch like certain scenes of this that have nothing to do with the characters from Rogue One that have more to do with characters from Star Wars. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying there? From other movies, I'll watch those <laughs> scenes. God damn it! I haven't I, seen it yet. Did I know. I I'll watch those <laughs> scenes, but I won't. I won't watch this movie again. It's yeah. It was disappointing, and uh, I was really looking forward to it going into it. I was just like, this could be a really cool movie. And I'm not to say anything about Gareth Edwards, who directed the movie. He also directed Godzilla and Monsters. Um, he's a very good director, and the scale of this movie, as far as what concerns like giant starships. And they're, you know, uh, what they look like comparison to, uh, you know, uh, where they are in space and everything. And uh, um, the effects are top notch. I'll never take anything away from that. They're very good. But the story is just, no, left me uh, left me wanting. So, yeah, that's, that's, disappointing. that's not a good one. Not for me. Mm. And you're lying to yourself if you'd like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Holly, worst movie of the year. Uh, worst movie, Love and Friendship, based on the Jane Austen novel, Love oh, and no. Friendship, starring Kate Beckinsale. Oh. I, I am a, she's not trailer. doing too good. I am a huge I'm fan. talking about Underworld's <laughs> coming up. Oh, sorry. fuck no, you. That's... <laughs> Underworld 5. Underworld 5. Oh, oh sorry. sweet Jesus, no. <laughs> no. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Jane Austen, and I love her stories. Um I really enjoyed the modern adaptation of Pride and Prejudice with Keira Knightley. Oh, I, I, shit. I thought you were going to say Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. zombies. Oh, no. no. Okay. She, she, oh, no. She didn't write that. That was edited. Seth Grimm's. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, this this was really, really disappointing. It was boring as shit. 
um, at least Pride and Prejudice, the, the story translates like you understand the time period and what is expected of people in the time period. And it's gorgeous. The cinematography is some of the most beautiful camera work I've ever seen. This movie was boring as shit. And the, the story does not transfer over. All the characters seem just dull and meaningless and shallow. And the acting is just subpar at best. And it's so disappointing. It's just shit. I, I don't know what Kate Beckinsale is doing, but it's not right. She's not doing much. It, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, don't She's bother. Being I, married to Ren I'm Harlan? a uh, Len Weissman. Len Weissman, yeah. Len Weissman, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, also, Arrival. That's not a good movie either. Just no. To let you all know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good movie. They lied to you about Arrival. They <laughs> lied to you. Yeah. Why? It's, not not good. Good. it's not a good movie. Yeah. It, well, no. What it has. Okay. It has moments. <laughs> it's, it's got the midnight special syndrome where the first 20 minutes are fucking awesome. The first 20 minutes are great. I yeah. love the first 20 minutes. Yeah. Everything after that. Yeah. So like, it should be uh, a short film. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, it it really just, you got to be able to write yourself out of the awesome setup that you came yeah. up with. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Character my uh, the worst movie Colin, I've seen this year. What is your worst movie you've seen this year? I think it's actually the worst movie that. It came out this year. You're like because bro, you I'm, would see that well, movie. No, because you were like I was disappointed by Rogue One. Okay, I was yeah. disappointed in, a, by in Love an and objective Friendship. way. Yeah, yeah. I'm I saying was... that the shittiest fucking movie that <laughs> oh, came out this damn. year was Independence Day. Oh, it's bad. Oh. <laughs> it's, I, it's it's so bad. bad. <laughs> No, Can but I it's change like, my mind on my pick. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. Like you haven't seen a movie this bad and since and, Transformers Age of Extinction. And, and I and I personally love the first Independence yeah, Day. I lo- the first like even great. though I know the first one is schlock, schlock. and silly. Sure. Schlock and silly, but but damn, is it enjoyable? <laughs> yeah, because I and think we talked about enjoyable. this before. We have, point. but not on podcast, I don't think. The, the first Independence Day even though it has horribly awful parts to it, has more parts that work. And when they work, work. they work really well. And so when you come away from the movie, you're like, well, I remember it. There was it was kind of shitty, but man, I really like that movie because there's like at least five scenes that are awesome. Yes, and I'm not just saying like special effects are awesome. No, although that well, happens also. Characters yeah. do yeah. things that yeah. are awesome. Yeah, when uh, the speech, you know, is fantastic. The speech, when oh, the, the speech is amazing. The, you the, guys, I recreated that speech in my senior year speech class. Bravo! Not even kidding. Bravo. Because it's that speech a fantastic is a, speech. It really, it's really good speech. When the first lady dies is a good oh. moment. The music is. good. Oh, like, oh, yes. this stuff. It really is. It's like, yeah. yeah, mama's sleeping now. And they're just like, yeah, oh, yeah. And, when they, just, and, and the when music first, wells up. Oh, my God. Cheers your heart it's out. Good. It's oh, good stuff. It's good. When they first see the alien, when Robert Logius first sees the alien, like, it, but sir, it's slowing down. All that stuff is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, or when they oh, come out of the clouds. Yeah. First good, just like, good oh, stuff. Good stuff. Independence so Day Resurgence Shit's is made by the same people. Uh, but 20 Roland years later. Roland Emmerich 20 years directed later. it. And uh, uh, crap, I'm blanking out Devlin. on the guys. Yeah, Devlin. Dean Devlin. Dean Devlin. Uh, well, I think he co-wrote this one. Yeah. But this is the most brain dead, <laughs> ill-conceived movie sequel of all time. No, that's maybe hard. I it's mean, pretty close. It's on, in the it's running. Close. You can put it in the, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's awful. It's hideous. The special effects are super overblown, but you can do that in any movie. But the characters are just, uh, well, I was going to say, like, um, retarded. I'm just going to say. They're just not. <laughs> they're retarded. Not. They don't mean anything. The lesser Hemsworth is in it. Actually, Jeff Goldblum does a decent. Right. Uh, as, as him. Yes. Yeah. But Brent Spiner, it's like, why did we Brent need Spiner. him back? Go away. Yeah, because he's the most annoying character. It's also like a very, I don't know. Um, I'm not Jewish, right? <laughs> so You're a ginger. So, yeah. So, I mean, maybe I'd be able to detect like an anti-Irish statement. Jewish. Like, am I offended right. by the patties or whatever? Like, sure. patty, oh, I don't think so. I but, don't have, I'm so disconnected. Being a not Jewish person, you are offended by the Jewishness of that no, character? I, well, I don't know. I don't know if I, you know, it's like, it seems like it's a very broad Jewish stereotype. Like, mm. why you would bring... Um, Judd Hirsch back in that character 
you know, I mean, I guess because he was available. They bring everybody I back. Guess so. Robert Loge is back in a wheelchair because he had a stroke Wolf at Smith. that point. It's Maybe very right. sad. It is very yeah, sad. Yeah, now he's dead. It's just like yeah. exploitive. It's kind of weird. But you bring back this character who's annoying in yes. this way that's like stereotypical, over the top. But it's written by a Jewish guy, Dean Devlin. So it's like, okay, this must be part of the Jewish culture. I don't know. Hmm. But the kvitzing and the schvetzing oh, and the, you know, all that just stuff. Visa. Yeah. And it's like, what is he doing in the movie? He's running at odds to the script itself. I'm going to pick these kids up in a He couldn't know that whole part could be dr- cut like, out. Yeah, be gone. exactly. It's like what wouldn't matter. I'm gonna outrace the 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 tidal wave. Yeah, this is one of the worst movies worst. ever made. It, I mean, <laughs> for the cost that it took to make it is uh, is just astounding. So, yeah, I mean, just to wrap this up, uh, Independence Day resurgence, resurgence, one of the worst the movies worst of all time, bad. and it happened to come out in 2016. It did. Yeah. I had high hopes and I was dashed. Yeah, avoid <laughs> like the plague uh, like unless the plague. you. Well, you know what I didn't see though. I didn't see Gods of Egypt, so I oh, know it's, it's it's I can't imagine it. Pro- probably possible, <laughs> but I doubt. But it has all the hallmarks, right? Yeah. I mean, right. just you, in the you trailer, can see like, it. That yeah. movie's probably really shit. Right, you're not expecting. So I didn't see that. Great, but things. I did see Independence Day Resurgence, which means yeah. I'm an idiot. So there's that. Yeah. So I guess that's it for our best and worst of 2016 episode. Hope you enjoyed. Good night. God bless. And And until then, (laughs) we'll see you next year.